Hello, it's Rosie here at Just Chill Baby Sleep. Today I'm talking all about overtiredness. So this is a really contentious topic that's talked about a lot in um, the sleep world, online and in books, um, and in conversations you might be having with your friends and family. Um, so let's talk about how we sleep. So sleep is really an intricate system and it's controlled partly by our internal body clock, our circadian rhythm that's ticking behind the scenes all the time. And the other thing that massively influences it and controls it is our sleep hormones um, and something called sleep pressure. And sleep pressure builds throughout the day and it hits its peak at bedtime and that's one of the things that actually causes us to fall asleep. So this drive to sleep builds and builds and then we, we go to sleep and this is what helps us. And melatonin, our sleepy hormones, also really high at bedtime and this is another way that um, we're able to go to sleep. A few things will influence um, going to sleep. Um, the light, so um, naturally if you start dimming the lights in the evening that really helps with melatonin production having a nice dark room. The activity that we do during the day, that will also affect sleep. Um, having a really great routine. So this goes for adults and babies. Um, having regular sort of activities, we tend to do at the same times roughly, will help prepare the body and know what's coming next. Um, so one of the things I wanna point out with overtiredness is it's really normal for babies and children to potentially seem a little bit hyper around bedtime. And some people will misinterpret these signals or these signs to mean that they are overtired and therefore they need to put them to bed earlier. In some cases, it is the case that your baby might be overtired if they've really not slept at all um, and that might cause issues with going to sleep. When a baby or a child is genuinely really overtired, cortisol, the stress hormone raises in the body and this this can be a barrier to sleep. More often than not, they will get to sleep and then they'll wake up, startle awake soon afterwards because the cortisol levels are high in the body. However, what I don't want you to do is become paranoid that your little one is overtired and try and get them down earlier for naps and bedtime than they actually need to because then you create another problem because baby's undertired and you're thinking they're overtired, but actually they're undertired. Um, also, have a think about the signs that your little one is showing because sometimes fussiness isn't overtiredness or tiredness. It can be that they're bored, it can be that they're frustrated, they could just be really excited about something and that's where this wired kind of overtired um, sort of theme comes in where people think that because they're a bit wired and they're kind of kicking their legs or they're shouting and running and screaming around um, that they're actually overtired. But children need to let off a little bit of steam um, and the body is really, really clever and we will go to sleep. We do know how to sleep. Um, so overtiredness is something I think that people worry about quite a lot. Um, make sure your day is balanced. That's the best thing I can suggest to you. Um, and don't try and force baby to have a nap when they're not ready. If they're really, really resistant to their nap, perhaps it's that actually they're not ready for that nap and maybe you've got your awake window slightly shorter than they need to be. So have a look at that. Um, if you're putting your baby to bed really late at night, they probably are getting overtired. But if you're putting them to bed at a sensible kind of time, sort of 7, 7.30 p.m., then it's unlikely that they're really overtired. Um, so I hope that's reassuring for everyone. Don't forget all the normal things that you can work on with sleep are the most helpful. Great sleep environment, great routine, work on a settling method and trust your baby and they will sleep, I promise. Bye for now.